decades now, the name Macklin has been known all over the world. This reputation is a result largely of Macklin's technically perfect, exact scale modeling of the railroad world. Millions of people have found that a Macklin railroad layout fulfilled their longings to experience for themselves the fascinating adventure of operating a busy railroad and to appreciate its technical perfection. A Macklin railroad layout will fire the imagination of any person of any age. Not that this is a new phenomenon, however. A model of Der Adler, the first German locomotive, was put into mass production by Macklin in 1935 and exported to many countries. Here are some more of the popular old-timers which Macklin built from 1890 onward. These are bound to make the true collector's heart beat faster. Times have changed, however, and so, of course, have the models. Let's take this handsome-looking steam locomotive as an example and look into the reasons for popularity. We'll take a round trip through our production plant, starting where everything else starts, in the design department. Here, all the manufacturing drawings are prepared, based on the drawings of the German Federal Railway's originals and scaled down in accurate detail from the boiler to the engineer's cab. We now go to the place where these drawings are used in the production of moulds and tools for the various manufacturing processes such as casting, stamping and turning. The tool shop. The basic mould locomotive truck is milled at one quarter the size of this model on a duplicating milling machine. And here are the model and mould for part of the locomotive body. Spark erosion. A physical chemical process is used to put the finishing touches to the mould. The finished moulds are now sent to the foundry. The material to be cast may be either zinc or plastic. Melting temperature 400 degrees, casting pressure 70 atmospheres, casting time 1.5 seconds. Result, a locomotive body. Here we have the wheels, cast eight at a time. Granulated plastic is the material used for all components made by injection molding such as the engineer's cab for our locomotive and the body of the tender, correct in every detail from the smallest rivet to the biggest lump of coal. From the foundry, the casts go on to be worked to bring them up to their final accurate standard. There is no substitute for working the casts by hand, as seen here, and supplementing this by machining. It would be out of the question to use either of these processes alone. Let's move on. There's still a lot to see. Right now in the electroplating department, overhead conductors are being nickel plated. Other processes that go on here are degreasing, pickling, phosphating and burnishing. Next, we call in at the paint shop. Here you see locomotive bodies receiving their basic gloss black color in the automatic all-round paint sprayers. A paint spray mask is used to protect those parts which are not to receive any subsequent spray. In this way, 
Paints can be applied only to the areas required. This walkway, for example. Our printing process enables the minutest lettering, numbers and symbols to be reproduced. After all, it is largely to the accuracy of details like this that Merklin model railroads owe their popularity. Let's leave the paint shop now. We stop in the place where buffers, axles, screws, wheels and lots of other items are machined. The lathe shop. The sophisticated, fully automatic machines you see here are used to produce tiny gear wheels, pinions and armature shafts. Other machines make springs so small that a thousand of them weigh just two grams. Axles and wheels pass to the wheel assembly area on vibration transporters. Before we take a look at the next construction area, stop everything. It's time for inspections, tests and trials. Are these wheels truly round? Roundness can be read accurately on this scale. Plastics and paints are tested in environmental testing cabinets to prove their ability to withstand high and low temperatures and extreme humidity. Inaccuracies, even on the smallest gear wheel, will show up under the microscope. The robust and indefatigable Macklin models are put through a severe testing program. And any item not up to specification is automatically rejected. After this digression, we return to our locomotive. The body is now finished and ready to pass on to pre-assembly. Let's have a look at the way the individual parts are formed, finished and fitted. Here you see multiple spindle drilling of a locomotive frame. Here you see a gear wheel and in the background a pinion being brought together on vibration transporters for press fitting. And here, the gearing is being assembled and tested. The driving wheels are fitted next. Then there are more tests. Our next stop is at the electrical component fitting shop, where among other things, the heart of the locomotive is produced, its motor. Here you see a field coil being wound for forward and reverse drive. And here the armatures, both of them on machines which can wind more accurately and more quickly than is possible by hand. The individual wires are soldered on and finally the armature is surfaced on the lathe. Further inspection is required here. Materials are subjected to destructive tensile tests to ensure that they are adequate for their working loads. Here, production line items are being spot checked on the projection table. The 20 times magnification on the ground glass screen makes it easy to see whether the distance between drilled hole centers is correct. If it is, the signal show go ahead. On to final assembly.
let's just take a moment to watch how skilled hands turn the various components into a complete locomotive. As well as surviving the previous intermediate stages of testing, the locomotive now has to show in an endurance test that it can meet Macklin requirements. And before it is packed, the locomotive is thoroughly checked yet again. Forwards, in reverse, on straight runs, and on bends. So now we have seen how a locomotive is created. Our first train has reached its destination. Let's also take a quick trip through the most important stages in the manufacture of carriages for our TEE train. Our first stop is in the stamping area. There we see how the metal plates are cut out from pre-printed sheet. Pierced and stamped to shape. Rapidly producing carriage body forms. And here the roofs are stamped. Now let's go on to the carriage assembly area. Skilled hands are fitting the truck here. A careful examination follows. And then the coupling is checked for correct operation as well. Our TEE train has now reached its destination and can make way for a freight train on the track. Let's consider how the track itself is made. Stamping is the first stage here too. Sheets printed with cross ties and ballast are cut into strips and stamped out into shaped plates. These are fed into the multi-stage press for piercing, pressing, shaping, cutting up, bending. And that's it. This apparently endless steel ribbon is gradually turned into the shape of a rail.
And here are the rails being ejected at the end. Now let's go on again. Let's see how rails and centre conductors are assembled to make the complete track section and how they receive their final check before being packed. Now we've seen how the HO gauge is produced in our factory and, oh, everything suddenly got a lot smaller. This locomotive is all of 45 millimeters long. That means it must belong to the smallest series produced railroad in the world, the Macklin Mini Club. And indeed, in spite of its miniature size, everything here works perfectly and just like the original. This train can do everything that the larger one can. Macklin opens new frontiers in the unending field of constructive leisure activities. Why don't we unleash our imaginations and enjoy looking at a fascinating, genuine reflection of reality? <laughs>